this is exactly how I start a lot of my clips when sh when shooting video. Daniel get ready to hit record and I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna say and I'm trying to work it out in my head and I'm just like you know what just hit record and I'll just figure it out on camera. <laughs> it usually works. It usually does work. There's something. I wonder why that is. Happens when you hit record. Yeah, it's like there's this pressure to just do just do something and then you do it and it's probably yeah. good enough. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's what we're doing right now. We are recording. Uh, oh. Yeah, I hit the button and then you started talking. So you like totally oh. did the thing that you were saying you were going to do, which is pretty funny. But I'm not the one that's supposed to be talking. It's, I don't have to start it every time. I just do. <laughs> How are you guys? I'm doing I'm pretty good. good. No, I'm doing yeah. good. I'm good. Cool. <laughs> that's, that's Jimmy's turkey. He has turkeys now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys know my turkeys are like dogs. They come up to, like, when they see me pull up and I get out of the car, they come running to me, and they all sit around me. I feel like Mother Nature. It's pretty pretty cool. It's been a lot on Instagram a little bit. Hmm. But the, this special breed of turkeys, which I didn't pick, they just were the only thing available at Tractor Supply in April when I bought them. You have to buy six because they deter people from buying one as a pet, and they want to make sure that they're being taken serious. So you can't buy one. You have to buy six of oh, ducks wow. and chickens and turkeys and so i bought six ducks and six turkeys and six chickens in the beginning of the summer and, and as the turkeys mature they began to just walk up and just sit next to me it was the strangest thing because i've had different turkeys i've had a bourbon it's like a brown bourbon bur white and i had a all brown turkey i forget the name of that turkey but they wouldn't they come near you and talk but they would never come and sit next to you and expect to be pet Huh. These five, there's a male, and the male is this, so there's five hens in one male. And the male just walks around with his chest puffed out, doesn't really get too close. But all five of the hens come over to me and just sit, like I'll be sitting in the grass on a sunny day, and all five of them come over and sit next to me, and they all expect to be pet and rubbed and everything. Hmm. So cute. It's so cute. Everybody That's that so sees strange. it is like amazed. Like you see like grown men, they're like, Oh my, like this guy, this construction guy's out there building the barn right now. And they're like, oh my God. They like get down on their knees. Like, can I touch it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, pet its head. It's okay. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute to see everybody turn into a little kid at a petting zoo. Because you, you never expect to be able to get anywhere near a bird yeah. of any kind. They just fly yeah. away or run away. And it's just the cutest thing. That's it. That's my turkey huh. story. I'm so, not killing okay. any of them, by the way. Everybody always asks. They won't get eaten for Thanksgiving. I probably won't even eat turkey on Thanksgiving. It's not really my jam. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're surrounded by really sweet little turkeys, it's probably not your jam. Cause then <laughs> yeah, no, it never really has been. It's just the cutest thing. And I said to the guys that they're doing the barn, they're closing in the barn, and I'm hanging out there, and, I'm like, the turkeys see me because I come up from the other side. They didn't know I was home. And they all come running to me. And, yeah, I'm their daddy. They like me. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so give me the, like, bottom bottom line – with having chickens or turkeys or any of that stuff, how much work on a daily basis is it to, like, is it worthwhile? Is it worthwhile for the eggs? It, yeah, well, yeah. If you have, like, where you live, Bob, you could probably have chickens, right? Would yeah, there's some in our thing? neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you've got a kind of sprawling area there. If you had, like, three or four chickens, you'd get, end up with a few eggs a day, probably be just enough. You know, if you wait a few days, you let it build up. I get about, in a week, I get about 15 eggs a week, maybe more. Right now, usually more when it's warmer out. They slow down when it gets cold out. It's not, It's not, and I have, I, I never keep count because I always, if I get obsessive, I lose one. I spend the whole night looking for it in the yard. So I stop counting. Uh, I must have about 15 chickens, six ducks, and six turkeys. And I put food in there about every three days and make sure they have food about every three or four days and I keep a big tub of water and just yesterday I went to tractor supply because now it's getting cold and I bought a a water heater because I keep mm. a big tub there used to be a different system but now it's just me I don't have to argue with anybody I just put a big tub of water there and I just put a, a, a horse water heater in it and it just heats the puddle of water and I make sure the water's fresh it's gonna be a little difficult going into the winter because I don't have a, a hose down there and I'm going to have to carry five gallon jugs of water down there from the basement because the basement water line obviously does not freeze but the ones out and open do so I'll figure that out and then I'll just hmm. keep a tub of water 
like a small trough, like a horse trough, and the birds all drink out of that. I try and fill up the the five gallon thing with the water feeder at the bottom, and the ducks love the water, so they hog the water feeder the whole time and just splash and play in the two inch wide ring around the edge, and they don't let anybody in. And they also eliminate all the water that gets splashed out. So that's why I just use the big tub. I'll come out in the evening to close the gig, and two ducks will be sitting in the drinking water, so I just have to get them out. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird <laughs> so I try and freshen so besides freshening the water every couple of days that's the only pain in the butt but I bring them so, out bags of food about every three days I fill up the, all the things so you get eggs from the chickens but and what I let is them the out purpose? in the morning and then I close them at night but what's the purpose of the ducks and the turkeys other than just like their buddies purely aesthetics they just okay. look cool and they're fun I mean actually you could get turkey eggs too hmm. and some people do buy them in April and fatten them up and they slaughter them and eat them some people do sure the turkeys that i have are the, the slaughtering kind but i won't do that hmm. i just think they're cute they're just like having pets i like them for they're like the background <laughs> actors in my instagram stories really that's really yeah they're. and on the podcast yeah, yeah. I, mean, I actually didn't let them out this morning so they wouldn't make noise <laughs> mm. i've been kind of getting into that habit of not letting them out the first thing in the morning if i'm going to do this or any other zoom calls huh crazy well we're not going to get chickens we have some friends that have some and they get more way more eggs than they can use so yeah, jenny goes over me. and buys like she gets like three dozen eggs from them for five bucks or ten bucks or something it's ridiculous so we have plenty of eggs i don't want to take care of chickens i was just curious because it seems like one of those things anybody that has chickens they're like oh yeah it's no big deal you just got to make sure like hawks and foxes don't get them and stuff but there's nothing really that doesn't do tell me that. how much actual work it takes to raise yeah, chickens i, I dump out a a 50, ga- a 50 pound bag of food about every three days and then yep. it's again yeah, because now it's thing? now it's just me again I can change all the rules that used to be really set in place I just tear open a bag I just cut a square in the side of the bag and I just drop it on the ground then I let them eat it all day long and then at the end of the day if I had a minute I just take the bag and then I dump it in their feeder for the rest of the couple of days so I do that a lot like they're all like we need food now we need food now so I'll just drag a bag out of the garage slice open the whole square side and just let them eat out of that for a few hours they eat out of it for like two hours and then they're done and then when no one's around I just pick the bag up and put it in their feeder so I, I cut a lot of corners now that no one's there to supervise me <laughs> and get away with it yeah it's just me. I mean, it used to be three people, two people here taking care of everything. It's just me now. Watering the plants, taking care of the grass and the hedges and everything. Mm. So it's we actually talk about watering the plants. That's hard. Oh, that is a pain. I mean, <laughs> you is, see plants like plants like knocking on the kitchen door. It's like, hey, could, did you forget me? <laughs> like I did actually. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Forgot I need to set you. a reminder for us every day. <laughs> Because we brought plants, all the plants in from yeah. that that were on the porch. I would just yeah. water them with the spray hose. And now they're all inside, and I forget they're there. But there's something really nice about having plants in the house. It it totally changes the feel of a room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I Absolutely. agree. Yeah. Jenny's one that, like, I, I like plants, but I don't have any on purpose. You know, I don't take care of them. I would, but she loves to do it, and she has lots of them. And she's one that will propagate whatever she has whether you're supposed to or not whether it's easy or not she'll just like i'm just this thing fell off so i'm gonna stick it in some water or stick it in some yeah. dirt and so we have all these little cups in our everywhere. window <laughs> yeah these little cups of little propagations behind our, science our sink experiments. yeah and you know it's it's pretty cool my granddad was the same way i remember like um when my grandmother was alive the house was a lot you know tidier and and everything but then when it was just him he was like well i'm just gonna let this plant grow forever and i'm gonna make 20 pots of the same thing and just give them to people and whatever so oh that's cute yeah we had a lot of a lot of that there's this uh there's a plant called a crown of thorns i think is what it's called and he got i don't know how we got to this he got a clipping of this from my grandmother the farm that my grandmother grew up on so we're talking you know early a like hundred years ago and he got a clipping of this thing that had been on this farm and then grew it into a plant and then started clipping off pieces of it and gave it to my brother and gave it to my parents and gave it to my sister and i think i had one but i killed it probably i don't know <laughs> but my brother i think is the one that has kept them alive the longest but it's kind of cool that this one plant has just been propagated out yep. through a few generations of of the family 
to think is pretty This important. is funny. I mean, wouldn't, obviously, we'd never expect to talk about this, but when I was in high school, I worked at a florist in 1984, and the guy I worked for was very knowledgeable in, on flowers and plants, and they, somebody came in with a palm tree that was broken, the cat knocked it over, and so he, he cut it where the break was, and and then cut a stalk out of that middle through the top away because it was dying. Gave me the, the stalk and goes, put this in water. It'll probably turn into a plant. He goes, most likely it'll come back to life. I gave it to my mother and that plant is still in my mother's house. That's and crazy. Really? And it's that stalk that we put in a cup of water. So that's 35 years ago. Wow. It's still there. And then wow. another story is there's a tree, a willow tree in, in the Lower East Side. Really old willow tree. It looks like it's 100 or more years old. It's twisted up out of the sidewalk. Everybody knows the willow tree on, on First Avenue and Avenue, First Street and Avenue A. And I would pull stalks off it, put them in water here. And so all the willow trees on my property are from the tree on Avenue A. That's cool. Oh. There's, about, there's about 20 willow trees. I plant them everywhere in the spring. So I grow the, and a tree, the snow knocked one down and I cut all the stalks off it, brought them inside in the winter and propagated all them in water and I planted them all around the property so I keep growing them and growing them I like willow trees everyone complains that they're a big weed and that they're just going to break and fall over I'm like I don't care I got plenty of room they look really the cool though yeah I, I like think them. don't their roots take over the the ground and can ruin houses uh my I, everything's far enough away yeah yeah I, I do it in the but, tree line because I just want the tree line to fill in to yeah, create some privacy I, I think that's one of the complaints about willow trees is the the root system Hmm. They're they're fragile. They they break under snow loads and stuff. They don't. They grow a little like they always break on the on the crotch really easily. Hmm. But anyway, so that's an interesting story that crazy plants could take over and keep going. David, do you same, have a lot of plants? DNA? We do. We have. I mean, not a lot, but we have a good amount of plants. There's snake plants all over the place. Some fig leaves and um, lilies that were from. The lilies are super easy to take care of because they they will look sickly if you don't water them for a couple of weeks. You give them a little bit of water, they come back to life like the next day. Mm. The, the fig leaf ones are super, super picky about how much water. You can't overwater them. They always, the leaves just fall off if you look at them wrong. Snake, <laughs> we have a, a bunch of snake plants and they just look gorgeous and they're pretty easy to take care of. I'm hmm. I'm talking like I do most of the take caring of the plants, but it's 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 usually Kelly. But sometimes we forget to water them, and so we're we're trying to cover each other. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't do any of it. <laughs> well, like, speaking <laughs> speaking of watering, I, would, then, I just don't need to. I say, but to bring it back to tools, when I worked with Wade in the graveyard. And Wade is the guy who I work with in the graveyard, Wade Fowler. He's the, the millennial stone cleaner is his Instagram and his YouTube. He had this five-gallon water pump, or maybe it's a two-gallon because it's not that heavy. And you know the ones you pump up and then you hold the spray nozzle? He had one with a battery in it. And I was t totally blown away. And I went and bought one. And that's how I water the plants. So you walk on, it, hold, it just looks just like one you would pump up, but there's a button on it and the whole head is a charging battery. And it runs a pump that pumps up the thing so you never have to go whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Mm. you just hold it and so that's how i water the plants in the house with mm. i just keep there's no soap in the bucket I just keep just pure water and that's how i'll walk around and because i have a lot of plants now inside the house because we brought a lot of things in from the winter mm. and that's the some... biggest pain is to run around with a five gallon jug of water to water all the plants around yeah and there are some automatic watering systems mm -hmm. like some of them will have a little wick on the bottom that goes into a pool and that wick just pulls the water up or the little glass tube or whatever and the problem with those is you completely forget about them and then they will get yeah in a month everyone's dying yeah and yeah. i'm just saying that because i'll get 10 emails saying you should check out this watering system <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, even the watering awesome. system needs to be babied, but just less yeah. frequently with enough time yeah. for you to yeah. forget you even have them. Yep, sure. You set reminders. Well, what have you guys been? Uh, what have you been working on? I just finished the bicycle roll, the roll for the bicycle for the front. It's a oh, leather yeah. wooden sided thing. I, I every time I speak with Weaver, I'm like, "What do you want to show? Is there anything you want me to show off? Is there any material you want me to play with?" And it's good because it gives me ideas that I otherwise wouldn't think of. And they came back to me and said. A lot of people ask about these saddlebags. 
and I started making it, and it's funny, you think you could make something from memory, and then I was making it, and then as like, I come across, I'm like, how do they handle the straps? You just assume the straps are just wrapped around this big roll, and I'm like, wait, how do the straps stay on it? Because I got to that point where I'm like, I'm, I kept kind of testing it in space, and I'm like, how do the straps just not fall off? I didn't understand how they stay there. So I had to go back and look at a couple of solutions, and they're not always the same, but one solution that I... People often just rivet straps right onto the exterior. So I was like, you know, let me weave it in and out. I think I saw one like that, but in a different circumstance. So I wove the leather in and out of just two little buckle holes on the beginning of the strap and the end of the strap. So that was a little problem solved. But it was fun. It came out good. And everyone's saying, are you selling these? Are you selling these? Not selling them. They're not easy. (laughs) Doing anything with stitching or wood. So no, I'm not selling them. But that was a good, that was a fun video. Did that and... I'm working on uh, some private stuff. I, I'm going to do a couple of videos that are going to only be on on Patreon, and that's the, me assembling several of these these bags that I'm working on these these snap together leather bags that I've been working on on Instagram. How are those selling? Pretty good. I mean, I'm not I'm not selling them hand over fist because they're very expensive. I mean, my host I wholesale them to my friend for 500, and I sell them directly for 500. So my friend who has a shop in Woodstock is selling them for more. But she has a gallery and overhead, and she also has clients that don't know me and never will know me. So it's kind of a different situation. So uh, she sold a couple, and I might have sold like seven or eight of them by now. For about five hundred bucks nice. each, and yeah. and and I'm just I'm just yesterday I put together about fifteen of them. I spent the whole day just cutting and assembling them, and uh, they're not they're not done. Once I assemble them, they still need to have the straps riveted in, and they still need about they all they need to be sh- to, to be pop riveted or not pop riveted, but the handset rivets. And so it takes a little bit of time, but it's definitely more fun than stitching. The funny thing is you can never, you try and be the most careful you could possibly be whenever I bring a piece of leather to the sewing machine, especially when the camera's on. Try and be the most careful I could possibly be. And it's a funny little thing. If you see in the video in the bike roll where I do, I run two lines of stitching and I put the machine, like everything's clean, perfect. I got my lines in order and I bring them the leather up under the foot of the sewing machine and I close it and I do one, two stitches and there's a huge stain of oil that was like collected on the foot that was just waiting to soak into something expensive and fancy and it did right into this. You can't see it in the video, but it really annoyed me. And then I had a little thread issue. So at the end of that stitch, I cut and I snipped and then the thread got sucked back into the machine. Of course, I edited it. You don't see it. And then the thread got sucked back into the machine. So I pulled the thread out and I re thread the machine, the upper part of the machine. And I leave out a very critical point, the arm that like tugs up. I leave that out because I'm an idiot, because I'm in a rush. And I keep trying to sew and it's not sewing and it keeps creating a ball. And I'm like, this thing worked perfect 10 minutes ago. So all that's me fumbling and I cut that off and I realized I didn't thread the machine correctly. So when I shed the stream and then the second roll of stitching. So in the edit, it starts already in the machine because the first five times I attempted it wasn't threaded right. But these are the things nobody sees. That's why we edit those parts out. <laughs> but, Anyway, so that's when I see that part of them. It's just a point of point of frustration. So I don't know why I brought that up, but so that's what I'm <laughs> because up. it was frustrating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what this podcast is about. That's right. Airing our grievances. Yeah. So no, it's not all. It's not all. Ro- it's not all uh, rainbows and sunshines for us YouTubers. <laughs> Mostly, but not all of it. Mostly. Yeah. David, what about you? So we are working. I'm just finishing up some nightstands and there you are they're they're wall hanging nightstands and for the for the new house so they're wall hangs not wall stands right yeah yeah they're 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 night hangs <laughs> night hangs i like and, it. Uh, it it's been That's a it. you know how anytime try that title you get 15 views yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> you won't you won't believe how these walls hang these night hangs were yeah these night hangs <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a nightmare titling this one yeah um it started off is supposed to be a super simple project just kind of like a square box that is french cleated to the wall and then with an extra little shelf coming down and then we got to a 
a point where we need like we didn't know if this was actually going to be sturdy because it's about 15 inches from the wall and that's a that's a lot for a french cleat and then we found that it was sturdy but there was like a little bit of flex which just didn't feel right and then we were yeah. going to add the second little shelf that would hang underneath and we realized that wasn't going to work at all and so we figured out a way to kind of connect those two in a different way, but have like a little C support between the two. This will make sense when you see the video, but was it, this is all happening in the video. We had to kind of change our direction and I didn't like how the little C supports did, didn't match anything else within the project because everything was square corners. And then I'm like, well, what if we change the, the drawer pull to this big thing that kind of adds a little bit of continuity between that and the and the C supports and it just all came together and it looks fantastic. It actually looks better after making the modifications to make it more sturdy than the my, my original design and just really happy with the way they came out. They look good. The there's going to be an issue with the ending because the floors are being worked on and it's taken a little bit longer than I expected. So I don't think I can shoot the ending to the video with them in their in their final resting position. So I'm That's funny. That. I, I did I did similar wall hangings years ago for a, a video. I might have made it for Rockler. I made the wall hanging drawers that connect to the wall, mm -hmm. and I had nowhere to put them in the city. So I put them on the cement wall in the workshop and said, one day I'll hang these somewhere. And that's how the video ended. And then when mm -hmm. the the Roku channel came out and they wanted them again. I was like, you know what? Now that I hadn't, I, we put them in Taylor's apartment a few years ago, and they're really beautifully in a placement. And I was like, you know what? Let me reshoot the end of that video because I could. Oh. So I did shoot the end. So oh, if anybody sees that video, and the video ends with me like sticking them on the wall in the workshop, and then there's an addendum. This is where they are now in place in a beautiful setting in a cool bedroom. But they are hmm. difficult to put on the wall unless you have good, sturdy walls. Uh, in that house, those nice old plaster walls. In this particular spot in my house, I have other ones that I bought on Etsy. Every time I come in my bedroom, if the cats are out, the cats are like sitting on both of them, and they're both drooping out of all the cats oh. love going from the bed. <laughs> and then they stand. Then I got a twenty-five pound cat just sitting on the edge of this cantilevered shelf, and yeah. they've pulled them both out of the wall. They're still on the wall, but any minute now, I'm going to find them on the ground. I have to take them off and reset them. I was thinking about that this morning, which is so funny, because I'm looking funny. at huh. it, and the little gap at the back of the wall, they're at like a three-degree or four-degree yeah. slant of both of them, because the cats always sit on them. That's where the <laughs> cats aren't allowed in the house alone. We um, <laughs> we kind of went with the wall-hanging nightstands, night hangers, because it would be easier to clean under, like if this is going to be an Airbnb, I want to make life life simple, and it just looks different. I think it's going to make for 100%, a really cool yeah. looking thumbnail. The ending, and no one's going to move them around and put them in a different bedroom while they're yeah, there. Yeah. You ever notice like we, we used to rent the house and we'd come back and like people would rearrange the house. It's the strangest thing. That's like we thought this would be better over there for that person for the that's evening. That's funny. That is weird. And they'd, they'd be like you know the chairs would be in different rooms and rocking chairs would be in different rooms and night tables like sometimes would be moved around. Well, one of the next videos that we're going to do is going to be a bed for that same bedroom. And so I think we're going to take advantage of not being able to show the ending to tease the, the next video saying that next we're going to make a bed. We can't we don't have access to the room because the room is being sanded and and refinished. So look for these in the next video. And I, I think that's how we're going to end it. And I mean, could you could you temporarily mount them? like to a piece of plywood, a nice looking piece of wood or something so that you could at least show their, you yeah, know, not in the final place, but this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, that's that's definitely there. what we're going to do. We, yeah. I drilled holes in my shop to hang it in the shop just to see how sturdy it would be. So, I mean, it's already, there's already room. One of them is, is hanging there now as it's drying with polyurethane. So the plywood idea might be a good I have, I think I have a nice sheet of cherry plywood that I could use <laughs> that you can ruin shots. just by putting two yeah. holes in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. YouTubers and their infinite amount of materials. That's right. YouTube sends you a stack of plywood when you yeah. sign up. I don't yeah. Know if anybody knew that or not, but yep. Well, that's cool. Um, anything, what else is going on at the house at the, 
you said you so were there's a there's we got a guy i keep saying mm. we got a guy because it's nice that we, i've never had a guy before but we got a guy <laughs> who's doing a bunch of work for us and he's just independent it's just a, a single person and he's refinishing all the floors and it's t he only uh the estimate that we got for the floors i thought okay that that's good that's that that's a decent estimate it's going to save me many days of work but it's taken him many days of work just for the prep and i'm thinking his estimate is way too low to to do the floors and so i'm wondering if he's kind of hating life right now because it's taken him much longer mm -hmm. so uh, I'm willing to pay him more than what he estimated if, if he feels like it, it should be should be more because I want to keep this guy around because he's going to redo he's going to redo the bathroom here in a few weeks. And so I was over there last night and most of the floors are sanded and it's going to look fantastic. Like I was mm. really excited to see the bare the bare oak flooring. It's, it's going to be pretty nice. It's nice. Cool. So other I got a crew here closing in the barn. So it's nice when you have somebody you could trust. It's, yeah. It's my friend Mike who, who went out of construction for a couple of years. And then recently his, his work circumstance changed. I was like, if you want to work on the barn, go for it. And he's like, okay. So now I got a guy. Again. Yeah. Hmm. I, I asked our neighbor a few weeks ago, I'm like, hey, we, got, we need some work done at this other house. Do you have any recommendations? And he's like, oh, yeah, we got a guy. And getting a phone call here uh we he's like we got we got a guy and we trust him like he just comes like we just let him into the house when we're not here and he does the work he's fantastic and and uh so yeah he has a he has a the security code to the other house we gave him his own security code and he can just go in and work when he wants to and it, it's got to be nice for him to work without people hovering over him and just let yeah. him do what he wants to do or what he needs to do yeah that's cool. Man. Well, for me, uh, let's see, this last week, what have I been doing? I'm working on a, a, a display case for inside of a door. Hmm. And this is like, well, yeah, this is one of those things that I think it's a cool idea. Nobody else is going to care about it. I don't even know how to, like, present the video. So we're, we're doing one of the, like, it's a, me with a hole in the door, you know, kind of looking through it, just like, what am I doing kind of things? Because I, if I were to say, a display case in your door, nobody would be interested. So, mm -hmm. but I think it's a really cool idea. Basically, I've got a hollow core door that goes into my shop. And you guys know I like toys, and I like to display things that I like. And so I've got a bunch of old Star Wars figures, like this guy, that, you know, if you have a bunch of these, <clears throat> and you put them on a shelf, and they're all stacked up deep, you can't really see them. And so what I decided to do was cut out the inside of a hollow core door oh, and cool. build in a display case for a single level of these. Mm. And so it's, you know, it's an inch and a quarter deep. Um, it's a big, like 36 by 27 panel with clear acrylic shell shelves with a blue background, LEDs built into the door that shine from the outsides into the end of the case, the inside of the case. And so these are just going to be captured across. And so it's funny because, like, when I said display case and a door, you were like, okay, you know, what? But what it turned into being is a bunch of really cool little problem-solving things that I've enjoyed, but I don't know how to get that across to people. And what I mean by that is I had to figure out how do you get a bunch of these things to stand in place and not move around, not when the door opens and closes, they don't slide. Mm -hmm. um, how do you light inside of a door? How do you make shelves that are movable inside of a hole inside of a door that's then coverable so that they're, you know, and how do you open and close it so that you can change out the figures and all this type of stuff? I ended up going into Fusion and building figure stands. See this mm -hmm. little like 3D printed stand? So I made a parametric model for the stand for the size of the post that fits the size of the hole on the foot. And this none of this is in the video because it's like, I don't know. Um, so I did this to have a little stand for him and then realized that 3D printing was going to take too long. So I came up with a, a laser cut way to do the same thing with the post 
So now I have stands that I can put in there and hold a whole bunch of figures that are clear acrylic and they set in place and they're not going to move when the door moves because they're perfectly fit. And then I was like, well, what if I want to put another thing in there like minifigs because we have a bunch of these little Lego minifigs because they're a cool display thing, right? They're small. You can get a whole bunch of them. Turns out you can fit twice as many of these minifigs in the same height as one Star Wars figure. Um, but I wanted to be able to display a bunch of these things. So then I built a parametric model of a Lego brick that this is 3D printed. And this has been done before. I mean, I'm not like breaking new ground or anything. But that's parametric. So I can put in the number of rows and columns that I want for the studs. I can put in the amount of margin that I want around the outside of the brick. And I just put in the numbers and then it makes a new model and I can print them out. So I printed this. Look at this thing. That's for the mini, for the minis? Yeah. I printed 20 of these. I have a whole, a whole, look at that. <laughs> I printed all these Lego bricks for stands that these guys just snapped to. It's so cool to me. Like, nice. <laughs> didn't, didn't you make a, a, an Instagram story about why you wouldn't want to 3D print or why? Yeah. Was that so you? I was, I, that... was, I was showing that I had done this. But then saying, you know, also, just so you know, this is a really impractical thing. Like, you wouldn't want to use this for making your own bricks that you're going to build with. And the big reason for that is the bottom of the bricks. So anybody watching the video, you can see, like, the bottom of a Lego brick and then the bottom of my brick are not the same, right? Because mine's solid. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Modeling in all of the negative space, the anti-stud is what they call it, in the bottom of a Lego, it, it, printing that would be a big pain in the butt because you'd have all these this gap that you're trying to print all this stuff um so it's impractical to make interlocking bricks but as just making a stand like it's it's cool because in the model i can just say i want a 25 by 3 and it just does it and i'm like oh, i want a little more margin on the outsides and you can add all this margin and parametric stuff is so cool but so this simple display case thing which won't be out until next week I guess um, it's just it's it's led to a bunch of cool little things that actually probably aren't even going to make it into the video I guess because it, it doesn't really I don't know <laughs> it doesn't make sense but that's Can, the stuff that really excites me is like I, yeah. I made a cool very do specific you have a do, flexible thing do you ever thing. do a, a second edit with like a voiceover like I usually do do you ever do that no I mean I talk through the videos anyway so yeah but I mean like you can you can do like a real behind the scenes one yeah, well, so, you know, last week we talked about editing help, and I think it was last week, about how I would like to be able to do more stuff like that for the second channel, but just the, just the you know, people power to do more edits is difficult, and we've gotten a bunch of contacts from people wanting to help with editing, um, and so it may be something where I can start to take those ideas and make another video just about how this mm -hmm. thing came to be that's not going to be a big hit or anything but at least i can do it and put it on the second channel if it's affordable to have somebody edit that you know what about uh, those little individual problem solving moments as shorts we do that um and and i try to capture some of those even if they don't make it into the main video i try to capture some of those on camera in the moment just so that we can make a short out of them and we've been doing more shorts lately um some of it, though, is just, you know, like the process of modeling this parametrically and getting all of that right. And it's a lot of just problem solving stuff. So I'd have to go back and make a short about it as, you know, yeah, like as a thing, as a finished product. Um, so it'd be after the fact. And another thing about this one in particular is that I had a conversation with somebody who works at Lego last week um, who's not in the department of like sponsorship stuff but he was like hey why haven't you ever done anything with Lego and I'm like I don't know they've never <laughs> reached out really and he's like well let me talk to some people and I'll see what I can do which is super cool and not a promise or anything but it also kind of makes me not want to like put out a short about how to uh, rip off <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lego. so there's that um, but anyway I it's one of those it's one of those interesting projects where the thing itself 
is not really going to grab a lot of people's attention if I just say what it is. So I'm trying to get people in through the, mm -hmm. you know, the less uh, opaque thumbnail. And even along the way, I've I've had more fun doing these interesting little kind of side projects that will make it happen, make it work, um, than doing the main thing, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But also, this is interesting. So the last video, last video? Yeah, last video was a Lego video, but the Lego sorter thing. And I was talking to my dad about this a couple days ago because that video went out and it's done all right. It's got some great feedback from people who, who like Lego, who are into that, you know, into the same stuff and everything. So when that video went out, the subscribe, and this happens every time. And so I'm talking about it in a good way, not in a bad way. But the subscriber count, you can see happens per video, right? The people that you mm -hmm. gain or lose per video. So the video goes out, the subscriber count starts going down. Starts, And this happens every That's time. For, and there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of reasons for that. That's not a big deal. But it goes down to, I think the lowest I saw it was negative 20. So I lost 20 people who got to that video and said, this is not for me, and they unsubscribed. Cool. Then I went back a couple days later, and I looked at that same number, and it was like positive 12 or something. And while that doesn't actually matter to me, the subscriber number has zero in like impact on anything. I don't care. The thing that was interesting about it was that I realized in that moment that I just replaced you know, 20 people and added 12 people who are into what I'm doing today. And I got rid of people who were into what they saw at some point in the past. Yeah. Not that I don't want people around, but like... Get rid of them. It, it got me thinking about the kind of... As we, as we change and as we grow and our interests change and all that stuff, there needs to be some mechanism to like shuffle audience mm -hmm. in and out to say like, this is me today. You know, if you're not right. into it, cool. <laughs> like no big deal. But I, I, I would like to be able to ground myself in the people right now who are into what I'm doing right now and in the six months do the same thing. And it was kind of cool to see that happening at a really small scale. Um, it's, it's you didn't just gain 12 people that was a net gain of 12 so you actually gained right. 20 32 people plus yeah. whatever and i get every once in a while i'll get um i i i think i used to turn more people off back in the day because i'll get somebody who says i haven't watched any of your videos in a couple of years you've changed i like this or the opposite mm. but it's i grow the audience grows and a lot of times this is the subscriber count is not reflective of who your audience is, especially when you've been around for 10 years, because I've got, right. you know, that uh, like that subscriber to view ratio for me is uh, not as good as somebody brand new who is all of a sudden taken off where they got a million subscribers and they're getting a million views of video. That's a fresh new yeah. audience. I've got an old audience who a lot of those people don't even watch anymore. Right. Yeah. But they're still like on the list. Yeah. 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 I, I remember several years back, Derek from Veritasium did some sort of a video and I don't remember exactly what the thing was, but it was like called unsubscribe now or something to mm -hmm. that effect. And he was mm -hmm. basically trying to force that. If you're not into it, cool. Unsubscribe. <laughs> like just get out of the way so that I can have a more clear view. And I don't remember exactly how he said it. It would be interesting to go back and watch that, but. Anyway, it was kind of neat to see that because, you know, I've talked about over the last few months doing the doing the Optimus head and the Hobbit feet. Like, those didn't do well, but that's the kind of fun stuff that I really I enjoy doing that, and I really want to do that stuff, and I don't want to avoid projects just because I know they're not going to perform. And I would really prefer to have the audience recycle mm -hmm. if it means that... What about a docuseries? If, Seriously, like a like a in a week, put out three videos on the same thing. As you oh, go just through. to like get more make of it, those particular people. More, yeah, no, make it more intimate. Make a little like a like a, instead of like one video a week, maybe three videos. I'm just spitballing three videos in a week where you get to intimately talk more about the things that excite you about a project like this, instead yeah. of glossing over the problem solving. So you get maybe three videos of ten minutes. Versus one video of 10 minutes where you got to jam it all in. 
Yeah. Was yeah, it could be. I mean, series. it's tough though because then you know that you know those are the three videos are not going to do as well as the one video, and then you're putting in more effort for less return. And yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I think that the thing that's cool about seeing that audience recycle a little bit is that every video I do that I really like the thing, even if it's a net negative subscriber count, it's like a purification. I don't yeah. know. I don't know of another way to, it's like a filtering of the audience to the people that are actually into me today. And that's great. And I, I so even though it's, it looks like a downward trend or a negative number, it still feels kind of good because it's like more true or something. I don't know. Was there something was, different about the Lego video? I, I remember watching the video thinking, this feels slightly different. I don't. I couldn't pinpoint what it was, but it felt slightly different. Did you take a different approach into like? Uh, I don't remember uh, uh, the, the way you talked on camera or the scripting or, or something. There's something seemed fresh about the reel that I saw. It looked really, looked very, looked very refreshing for some reason. It was the colors think, of the plastic, maybe. Oh yeah, it could be. <laughs> Everything's not no, black but and it's, gray. It, also, uh, it was, uh, it, I noticed the cinematography was much more intimate. Maybe oh, that's I don't what know. I mean, I'm shooting. I'm shooting everything myself now. Um, but when you go from a landscape to a reel, maybe it just it forces you to crop it better. Crop in, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. So I mean, it just looked good on the reel. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to just be. Not that I wasn't ever trying. To, not that I was ever trying to act like anything, but I feel a little bit more relaxed on camera than I have. Maybe that's what I was in the feeling. past. Not realizing that I didn't feel relaxed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like um. um and I think honestly, in the the past several months, my life has changed a fair amount in the last six months or so, and I just generally feel lighter. So maybe that came through. Yeah, in the video. that's Hopefully. really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I before we hit record, Jimmy was saying everything is going to crap and all the all of the video suck or whatever. Do you guys enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> that's an exaggeration. That's a that's a uh, that's greatly exaggerated. But maybe do you guys enjoy? the that game of youtube i know it's not for for the for the bank accounts it's it's not as i still as it enjoy used to be, it. i still enjoy, I enjoy it. the game i i enjoy playing i still enjoy game. making a video a what, week i really do but what about the game of adapting oh i don't know i don't I mean i guess we all kind of bent over for reels you know we we we, we force fit reels into our lives and shorts even though we didn't want to. I mean, for the most part, most of us are doing it. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's nice to be able to milk a little bit more content out. And the one thing I love about Reels, a friend of mine is doing some sort of uh, deep dive on YouTube creators. I, I don't know exactly. She couldn't tell me exactly what she was up to, but she interviewed me yesterday. And uh, I said, the one thing I love about making Reels on Instagram is that you could use any music you want, which is totally exciting to be able to just go through like my own personal library of Hmm. whatever I feel like putting next to a video because I used to edit all the time to all cool music and then when if I published it I couldn't publish it with that music in the beginning of YouTube so I just stopped playing with good music because I just could never do anything with it and so now that we can do reels on Instagram I could pull up any cool soundtrack that I like and have fun with it and so that's one thing I really do love about is the freedom I don't know how copyrights work in that arena anymore. I have no idea. I just know I can't do it on YouTube. So that's that. One thing I'm, one, I'm wondering if, if, if we, I don't think we have a subject today. So maybe not today, maybe, maybe today, but uh, we could talk about adapting to change. Mm. I, I don't mind. So to answer your question, I don't mind adapting to things. I've, tried to adapt more the older I get, realizing that it, our tendency is to not. Our tendency is to like, this is the lane that I've picked, this is who I am, these are the things I like, and I'm getting older and I'm just gonna stay in that lane and I'm gonna do those things. And I realize that that's not actually a good thing for us. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not it's not a good thing. It's not a positive growth kind of thing. And so I'm, I'm good with adapting I don't like the game of it. And I, and the thing I don't like about that is being able to deliver what I want. Uh, hmm. I like to be really intentional about the things that I do, purposeful about the things that I do. 
And if I'm trying to purposely make something to deliver to a specific person and I can't get it to them, there's an unreliability in that that I, that's out of my control that's really frustrating to me. And so the game part of it puts in this like this gate in the middle of, of that that like, I don't know, maybe we'll give you the person the thing that you made for them or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll do, I don't know, maybe we won't. And that's really irritating because like, I want to make something to serve somebody. I want to make something to that they can enjoy. And if I can't get it to them directly, that's, man, mm. I don't like that. I would rather have the overall return be lower but predictable. You know, it's not like I'm like I'm not getting a million views on everything and so that's really frustrating. That's not what I mean at all. It's that I would rather know that I was going to get 10,000 views every time I hit the publish button. Then I could plan for that. Then I could adjust to that. I could adapt to that setting, but the current game that you're talking about is just like whoa. it's yeah. like you know try to make this sandwich while you're on a roller coaster well I, that's really hard i don't i don't want to do that i just want to be able to make a sandwich and then give it to the person who needs the sandwich you know <laughs> so <clears throat> i i do enjoy the game i think it's just because i had this addiction to learning new things like i subscribe to way too many of those learning websites and that, that edu- educational stuff is kind of like uh, that's my entertainment I do find myself there are certain things outside of what we do that I have a hard time adapting to um, and one of those things is not everything needs a freaking app I don't need a uh, I don't need to I don't want to run my appliances with an app I also hate turning on <laughs> and off lights by talking to the air like hey google turn on living room lights i freaking hate it i just want to hit a switch i don't care that i have to get up and i just want to hit a switch and so um there are, i and i'm trying not to be an old man about some some of these things but yeah i'm an old man about some but things. that that old man thing that that sentence right there that thing that idea is what i'm talking about is that it's it's fine. I think it's good for us to have things that like, this is just how we like things to be. And as you get older, it's good that you've narrowed down the things that you like and everything, but then not having flexibility to adapt. I'm not saying this about you. I'm just saying in general, Mm -hmm. not having a flexibility to adapt when you need to, when it's better for you to adapt. That's where a lot of people get stuck. And then they become the old man. They become the get off my lawn guy. And, I'm trying to make sure that I'm picking the right things to be to care about and then not care about the things that actually don't matter. You know what I mean? Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. I just told myself when I was younger like I'm never going to be that old man, you know. I'm always <laughs> I'm always I'm always going to listen to cool, aggressive, heavy music and I'm never going to not enjoy new technology and then here I am like Ah, my music tastes have changed. Not everything has to be at turned up to eleven and just guitars in my face. And I mean, but it I, should I, be to I, be I, honest. I, I, yeah, <laughs> um, I adapt to that, some things and I don't adapt well to other things. You guys are yeah. gonna laugh. I uh, I moved up here seven eight years ago, and I took my television. I put it in the workshop. I haven't touched it. I don't. I, I watch stuff on YouTube. That's all I ever watch is YouTube. And uh, my new companion wants to always watch everything on Apple TV. So at her house, we watch it at her place. And recently, she's like, don't you have a TV in storage? Can't we just pull it out and set it up? And I, so reluctantly, like it took literally six months for me to finally get it here. She brought over an Apple TV. We pulled the TV out. We set it up. And she logged into all the accounts she likes to watch. And she's like, There. And now with the funniest thing is, is I won't touch it. I won't turn it on. I won't go near the remote control. I'm like, put on YouTube. And she's like, here, you just go like this. I'm like, I, I, every time I go near the remote control, I just swipe and I pick the wrong thing because the top half is a mouse pad. And the top half is a mouse pad. Then when you go to click, I like swipe away from it and I click on the next thing. I just, I don't want to touch it. I was like, you just put on, put on Hulu, whatever we're going to watch next. I go, you put it on, I'm not touching it is the most frustrating thing for me 
is to deal with the television interface, deal with the remote control. So that is why I just don't do it. I just, it, when TV became, I talked about this once a long time ago on this podcast. When you had to program a channel, that was the minute I stopped going near a television set. <laughs> I was like, that's it. I don't need it. Don't You've been an it. old man for a long time. Yep. Don't need it. <laughs> Since my 20s. <laughs> When YouTube came up and I'm like, oh, there's a piece of the TV show I watch, which is probably just about as much as I'd watch if I took the time and energy to turn on a television set. Let me just watch three minutes of Curb Your Enthusiasm. That really excites me. I don't need to watch the whole episode. That's and I see the icon, I tap it with my thumb, and that's all I have to do. But when I got to scroll through menus and you know, like the one thing I want to watch, I'm like, oh, Vice, let's watch Vice. We don't have an account for Vice. Forget it. I don't want to watch this thing anymore. So, so that that's where that's hurdles. where like I don't adapt. I just completely eliminate. But those like, are hurdles. The minute, <laughs> the minute right. like things became complicated, I just go. I guess I don't need that anymore. I don't adapt. I eliminate. <laughs> <laughs> like this is another really frustrating thing, and I do adapt. Obviously, I do. I mean, here I am. I'm like the one of the oldest guys here, and I'm on YouTube with all you guys, all you youngsters. But with. Um, youngsters the other day when my dremel tool broke the, when dremel gate <laughs> my friend calls it dremel gate <laughs> dremel gate with dremel gate i said okay maybe you know what all over the box is download the app maybe the app will tell me what's wrong with this thing so i downloaded the app and i went through the app the only reason the app works with the device is to turn it the speed that is the only so they had a team of inventors and designers sitting around the Dremel table. I mean, I don't give them a lot of credit. They're sitting around and go, let's make an app. Well, what can we do with the app? Well, you could adjust the speed. Well, you can do that on the tool, but then you could also do it on the app. Yeah, but you could do it on the tool. No, but you could do it on the app too. Okay, let's make the app then. Completely pointless. The app did not say that the tool was in some sort of special mode. The app actually said that the tool was fine and ready to go. So there's another reason that the app is not in, not has no purpose. It doesn't tell you the emergency mode that the the tool has a red exclamation point on it, but the app doesn't see that. But the app will tell me to turn the speed up and down, and when I'm turning the speed up and down on the app, the speed control on the thing is changing. But it still doesn't tell me why there's a red exclamation point. A lot of things have apps prematurely. That's the point. And Dave, you said that a minute ago. That was my example. Yeah. <laughs> I could say a lot more, but I'm really being. No, don't hold back. Tame. No, I can't, can't curse on this app. Can't curse. I got on this app? This podcast, <laughs> can't, curse, an app. can't curse on this podcast. I got I to adapt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, yeah. I think yeah, adapting you know, is one of those things that. Adapt or eliminate. It, I think we have to do on a regular basis if we're if we're problem solving. You have to be able to adapt to using a new tool. I mean, we've talked about that many Sink times. Or the swim. laser and, and stuff. I'll say. <laughs> but I also think, like, uh, like I was trying to say earlier, I I also think it's good to know when to care. And part of the YouTube thing, part of the game part that you're talking about, part of the ah, man, I don't know how to say this without offending people. There's <clears throat> There's one side of YouTube creators who, from my perspective, have given up on the things that they cared about in pursuit of the game. They are willing to change everything. They are willing to become anything to play that game. They're adults. Cool. You know, I'm not, there's no comment on them on my part, but I see that. And I also know that I don't want that. <laughs> I also know that. There's, there's parts of me and parts of why I'm doing this that it's good to care about and it's good to maintain. And it's that is not adaptation. That is like concession maybe mm -hmm. is a good way to say it. And so when it comes to that game, yes, I'm willing to adapt. I'm willing to try a lot of new things. I'm trying to change things to make it work as long as, it's, as it fits with who I am, what my goals are how I want my life to be, which I think is a big part of it is like, I want my life to be a certain way. And if trying to play the YouTube game is incongruent with how I want my life to be, then I'm not willing to do it. Is that a fair way to say that? Yeah. I guess. I think uh, a lot of 
YouTubers are are like people who want to dedicate their lives to being a politician. Like we, you know, you 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 start off in city council council and you work your way up. And I think everybody has a really good intention at first. Like I I want to make my neighborhood better. I want to make my city better. I want to make my state better. I want to make the country better. And I think a, a lot of times along the way you then start playing the game and then you're like oh well if i want to make these people happy i have to do this type of thing and then you, you kind of lose that authenticity uh, and the uh, and the intention you had at first and i think that's that's a pretty pretty common thing with not maybe not just youtube maybe just anything as you work your way up the corporate ladder and sure. um, sometimes you need a, a a good reset to or a kick in the pants to realize how you got here and 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 why and I, and I, these are things that i'm going through through myself i'm like okay i i i do love woodworking i also love video making let's 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 see if we can be a little more authentic in in what we're doing and hmm. sometimes that means slowing down sometimes that means making longer videos um and i don't know it's a i do enjoy the game I think it's. I think I need the game to keep me interested in playing. I I need the game to keep me interested in making videos. You know, it's interesting. I I definitely enjoy still doing it. But what's the fact that obviously views are down from most of us is a certain sense of freedom because it's now a. I'm not saying I'm going to go bananas, but there's a certain sense of freedom in knowing that not too many people like you don't have the same like center stage that you had. So you can get a little bit more experimental. It can make videos a little bit longer. I could experiment a little bit. But in general, I'm basically staying in the same lane, which is transforming material into interesting objects in an interesting way. It's sort of my mantra. And teaching along the way. Teaching by showing, not necessarily explaining. Uh, but there is a certain sense of freedom. Like each week I'm like, who, like I said to my guy the other day, it's like, oh, can we put out this many videos? And what? I said, it doesn't matter. I think I said it before we started. It doesn't matter what my thumbnail is. It doesn't matter what the title is. It doesn't matter what day we put it out. It doesn't matter what time of day we put it out. None of that matters anymore. So I can make four videos in a week and publish them whenever I feel like it. Like I used to just, as soon as I was done mm. editing, I'd hit publish. When we first started, I'd, yeah. when, as soon as the video was done, if I finished a video four days later, I'd hit publish on that one. If I fit, finished a video three weeks later, I'd hit publish on that. There was no schedule or anything. So that certain sense of cowboy freedom is sort of how I feel now. Hmm. We didn't even think about thumbnails. I mean, when thumbnails didn't even matter, it's like YouTube would just grab whatever was like the right appropriate. Hmm. You'd pick one of the three that was the best and then title it whatever you wanted. And then that worked. And then it didn't work. And so until something <laughs> new comes along that works, I don't know. Well, and I think that's, I know that happened to me where you start building a business. And I think this would be the case with, in, outside of YouTube as well where you start building something <clears throat> and you find success and then you whether you mean to or not your brain goes that success equals what I did and so if I want more success I should do more of that thing and if I change from that thing then that will equal not success and so you just like get into this what I'm doing what I did equals this thing and I have to keep doing it and I have to do more of it and I have to do more of it and I have to keep doing it and then it, like you're saying any change that you actually want to make for yourself or for improvement, it's got to be vetted against, is it going to continue to succeed or am I going to shoot myself in the foot by changing something? And so I definitely felt that where over the past few years, I would write off, and we've talked about this. I mean, I would write off a lot of ideas because I knew that they wouldn't even like, it's not worth trying this idea because I know it's not going to work. I know it's going to go counter to what has worked in the past. So I'm just not going to. And then, yeah, the freedom comes in when you realize, well, like what I was doing that was successful before is also not working or it's not working like it did before or whatever. Okay, well, if that thing I thought was tried and true is not tried and true, then like, hey, man, let's say open season, do whatever. And that's that's a far more healthy way to be, I think, at least for me, it is. And I wish that I had kind of had that clarity two years ago or something rather than trying to. Like this dead horse, 
I need to beat this dead horse some more, and I need to keep beating this dead horse because I'm going to get back to the thing. The you funny thing is, what were you saying? In two years, yeah, yeah. you're going to have even more clarity, and you're going to be like, oh, I wish I would have yeah. done. Yeah, we, yeah, we're all growing. Sure. Yeah. Hindsight. Right. What, what were you saying, Jimmy? I was going to say I like to just I like to consider changing within my arena as opposed to you see uh, some people step completely outside the arena and they get huge success, but I wonder how sustainable it is. You know, mm. uh, so like for instance, like a, and I'm not going to talk bad about him because he's done a fabulous job. But like for instance, Wrangler Star. If you guys watch Wrangler Star, how much he's changed? He's changed like completely. He's like a different person, but he's getting massive views. But mm. he he's doing all these. These she's really done well with shorts. <clears throat> I actually like his content now more than I did before. But he's playing a character. He's no longer like mm. Cody that we all met. Mm. You know, he's he's completely different person but it's working for him and the content is pretty interesting i'm not going to deny it uh you know he's been an oddball he's been a pretty uh divisive character over the years some people love him some people hate him and he and i've had our thing in the comments but we, we squashed it but what he's changed he's really changed bizarrely but i i tend to see through it i see he's just doing a character but it's working for him and he's still putting out good information, whether you like it or not. I mean, it's sometimes it's, you know, it's gun content, it's controversial stuff, and it's, you know, prepper stuff. But it is interesting. So he's a, he's a good example of someone that's completely changed to try and buck the system, and it's working for him. But I couldn't well, do that. I couldn't it's interesting, that. though. I don't know him. I don't know the content you're talking about, so I can't yeah. make any statement on mm -hmm. this. But in that situation where you have one person who was doing one thing and then they went really different the other way... I mean, that could be the case with anybody of, you know, maybe they were a character first and now they're mm. not. Or maybe they were themselves first and right. now they're a character. But either one right. of those things are a change, I would imagine, an intentional change towards something that works better now. And I think that's, I think that's kind of what we're all doing is we're trying to make mm. an intentional change towards what works better right now, whether that's. I, I don't know. Uh, I did but, that with, you know, my, my previous full-time job of like, oh, I got hired as a as a graphic designer and then they needed a web developer. I'm like, oh yeah, I can be your web developer. I can, I can, I can be that character. And I was trying to play the game. I was trying to put myself in a better position at work. And it's, I'm probably always going to do that. I, I'm always looking out for what yeah. I think is best for me at the time. Yeah. I think it's good to adapt. Yeah. I think it's good to reevaluate what you can offer, what you need, um, what's available, because all that stuff changes on a regular basis. And I think we can get into trouble when we don't pay attention to those things. Mm. So I think it's a good thing. Mm. Mm. Um. I'll learn how to use the remote. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I just kicked something over. Sorry. Yeah, Jimmy needs an Apple TV. If you still have the <laughs> Apple TV with the, 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 the flat mouse pad track thing at the top of the remote, you got to get the new one. That previous remote Is this was the a new worst one? thing Apple had ever made. Yeah, the new one, the one with the mouse circle thing, and it's got uh, Bob, maybe Bob is pulling one up now. Oh, no. Oh, I, th I thought you were. Yeah, the one with the flat top, that was the worst thing Apple has ever made. Yeah, that is so annoying. It is so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Especially my, my hands is dry like wood, like nothing happens when I touch it. You know, I'm sorry this turned into a, uh, an old person podcast of just gripes and, <laughs> and things we hate. Maybe next week we'll talk about things we love. Next week we'll just talk about how our backs hurt. Yeah. So big thanks to our Patreon supporters who give us an opportunity to complain about things and to talk about changing things for the better. <laughs> Big thanks to everybody over there at Patreon, especially our top supporters, Corey Ward, Albers Woodworks, Works by Solo, Chad from Mancrafting, Chad's Custom Creations, Rich at Low End Designs, Odin Leather Goods, Sean Beckner, Scott at Dad It Yourself DIY, The New Jakey Workshop, Warren Works, Michael Manegin, The Web Ranch Specialties, and Crabtree Creative. Thank you. Uh, but also people like Newton Makes. There's a bunch of people Ooh. that help us out. They all get the after show with video now. Sometimes, Hi. probably. Um, and the after show is more of us talking. It's not complaining. more complaining. It's not more <laughs> complaining. It's more stuff. It's usually secret stuff, upcoming stuff. Jimmy talks about all of his TV shows and that don't happen. stuff. 
And yeah. So if you want to help us out, we would greatly appreciate it. You can go to patreon.com slash making it. Um, put links in the description and all that stuff. But go check it out. Big thanks to them. Thank you. Do you guys have anything to recommend? I have something really good to recommend. I mean, this is okay. the one good thing that came out of having a Apple TV. <laughs> The one good thing. Do you guys one watch? And I actually heard him on. I heard him on Marin, John Wilson's How to How to with John Wilson. Do you guys watch this? Nope. Oh my god! I figured you guys would both be like, "Yeah, that's such old news." Dave, How to with John Wilson. Uh, I started watching the. It's an HBO show, I believe. I started watching the yeah. first episode yeah. and I got distracted. And I keep people keep telling me to watch it. You would love it. Yeah. It's really great. It's this guy just walks around. John Wilson. He's obviously the comedic. Uh, he's got a comedic documentary style, and he walks around New York City and just films everything in New York City, and then turns it into a narrative. Birds fighting, people feeding pigeons, people like inside coffee shop windows with weird facial expressions. He turns it all into a narrative, and every week it's a different subject that meanders. So it's like how to buy real estate. You know, how to split the check was another one. It's really, really, really worth the watch. It's super funny, especially if you have a quirky sense of humor. And it's just, it's a great thing about showing how, you know, we we film so many random things on our phones and we just don't know what to do with them besides just send them to close friends. But he strings these things together in a narrative, which is pretty, huh. pretty, pretty incredible. It's funny. It's on HBO Max, whatever. It's, it's old. It's already now a few years old. A lot of the episodes take place during COVID. And I heard him on Marin, and I, that's what made me look him up. So check it out. So cool. Mine comes from a listener of the show. Uh, he goes by Pajamas on Twitter, and he recommended oh, yeah. this wooden Game Boy video, which is pretty incredible. So the this channel is called There Ought to Be. He took he got a new CNC, and so he took a Game Boy and he re. He, he drew up the whole thing, I believe, in Fusion 360, and then see and see this amazing-looking wooden Game Boy, and it's right up my oh, alley wow. of turning everything into wood. That is really cool looking. Dang. And he's not the first one. Weird. Oh, there's, there's more. Like a bunch of them. Yeah. I mean, his is the nicest looking, but there are other ones. I don't know why that's surprising. I've seen them pop but... up a little bit. <clears throat> That's cool. Um, mine is so. Uh, I've talked about the slow mo guys often. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked about a bunch of their videos and stuff. They did a new video about exploding gold in a vacuum at eighty thousand frames per second. That's the name of the video. What? And they basically took sheets of gold leaf and they put it in a vacuum chamber. What? And then when they let the pressure into the vacuum chamber, it just the sheet just explodes. What? <laughs> the thing and it's a cool video um, but the cool thing of the thing that made me put it here and talk about it right now is the fact that it's not it's not something that anybody would ever want to see <laughs> it's not it's not one of those things where you go oh yeah I've always wondered what happens when you put a watermelon in a microwave or what you know whatever the thing is like it's not something that anybody would want to see but they did it because they wanted to see what it looked like and it's not any different than their other videos, really. But when I was watching it, I just kind of had this feeling of, like, these guys are just doing this for themselves. Like, they they really, they found a thing that's interesting. They like to see details on things really slow. And they just, they've had success at it. But they're they're just doing, like, weird little things like this. And they're able to keep doing it. And I think that's really cool. And I think that spoke to me more than, like, the actual video, you know, where actually, it, it, it's pretty it's a cool looking thing and i think that's why i watch their videos not that i care about slow-mo so much not that i care about mouse traps or water balloons or any of the stuff that they do on a regular basis but they genuinely have a good time making the videos you can tell that they're best friends and they just like have fun poking at each other and just trying weird things and seeing what happens and i don't know that's the kind of stuff that i think should exist that's kind of playing outside of the algorithm mm -hmm. and you know all that um so yeah. one of the things that i've discovered about myself is that i don't enjoy i, I enjoy 
woodworking more when my brother is there. Like he's there hmm. filming me, and it's almost like I'm sharing this with him. I have somebody to bounce ideas off of. He's got some good ideas, or he sees things that I don't want to see, and it just—I don't even—it uh, it just makes it. It feels like I'm doing it more for myself when he's there, just because there's this energy in the room, and I don't know. That 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 that's that's all. It just made me think of like yeah. I enjoy it more for myself when I'm sharing this with a, an actual physical person. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, mm-hmm. that's it. You mm-hmm. guys got anything else this week? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Thank you, guys. Love it.